So I want you to think about the amount of data that we are all producing with the devices that we are carrying, the amount of bytes that are now flying between us. I want you to think about it. And I want to make this question. How many of you do not have a smartphone? It's one, I mean, brave guy. I think we, we should, he deserves an applause. That. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that we are carrying devices that are capturing data every time. We are using them to send data information about us. It's revealing what we are somehow and how we connect with the world, no? So I want to make you, I want to make you another question, sorry about this, but do you think you own this data? Do you think you own the data that you are carrying in your phones or you are sending from your phones everywhere else? So a lot of people think that, things that don't, don't, they don't. Yeah, you know, ask these guys. <laughs> Bradley Manning revealed that there is data that should be in the public domain and it's not. And then Edward Snowden revealed that it's private data that is being used by public organizations, which is kind of funny, right? So let's think about what we think is our own data, and it's basically the data that, you know, we produce every day when we change our status, when we take pictures using Instagram, when we tweet, when we tweet oh, I'm in TEDx Barcelona looking at this or that, or when we upload a video in YouTube. What has happened in the last years is that we moved from the TV model in which we have to, you know, fit our time to get connected to a certain channel to get access to content into a moment right now in which we can access the content to that content on, the, on demand. And most importantly is that we can produce that content. Okay, so we, are, we have a huge amount of power of producing content. And what we use that for? To take pictures of food and share it in Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that Okay, good. What does it help, I mean, to check what my friend is eating right now? <laughs> How does it make my life better? I don't know. I mean, but on the other hand, there are, you know, recently we know what happened in the Arab, in the Arab Spring and what we call the Twitter revolution. It mainly changed a government. And some people say that, yeah, it was Twitter. But what I can critic criticize is right now there is a huge crisis in Egypt because that revolution didn't create like a really strong community, right? And that, I want to jump here for, to something that most of these things that are happening now, most of our activity that we develop every day is happening in cities, right? Cities, we, most, more um, than the half of the population in the world is living in cities right now. And by 2020, seven, at least 75% of people will live in cities. So cities will be the great, great challenge that we're going to have in the future, how to sustain them, how to live in cities, how to interact with the cities. And it's in cities where we develop most of our activities. It's where we buy, it's where we tweet to someone, we send an email, and so on. So it's like a, there, is, there is a big amount of data that we're producing in our cities. It will be the, big, the main source of data of people, transactions, what you buy with your credit card, who you called, where were you yesterday? That's happening mainly in cities. So we are creating a huge amount of data on top of us. And some people say that this will be the new oil. Actually think about what does Google sell? Exactly. They might have a phone, but they don't sell as much as iPhone or Samsung in the world, right? It's mainly that Google trans makes transactions with your data. Have it ha did you ever happen that you were emailing some, e emailing some friends saying, you know, I like skateboards, and suddenly you are in, you know, in a website looking for the news, and then you have an advertisement about the skateboards? It happens everywhere. Or you, or you email someone about, you know, I like Barcelona, and then you get like cheap tickets to, to Barcelona in a sports website. Someone is using that data. And some people is looking for businesses that will be created from that data. One of that big part will be what is being called today smart cities, which means that our cities will be smarter. We will have driverless, driverless cars. We'll have streets that change direction according to our demands and so on. We, we will have a big layer of technology 
embedded in cities, and mainly we will, we will not have to worry about anything because the cities will be super smart. And also, we will have things connected. We will have devices talking to each other, generating intelligence between them. The machine-to-machine -machine communication. So imagine that your car will tell your fridge that you are in a way home and it's going to defrost your dinner, right? So these kind of things. And there will be billions and billions of dollars and euros around these businesses. But there is one big question. Which, which will be our role? What are, we going, what are we going to do if the cities will be so smart that they will do everything for us? If our devices, they talk between them, and we cannot talk because they are talking between them, maybe we cannot interrupt the conversation, right? So we make ourselves, we made ourselves this same question. I say ourselves is I, me, and a group of other six people that some people tell us that we should stop looking as a rock band and look at like, you know, serious business guys. But yeah, we are some guys with some bird, and some, some of them they play in rock bands, that's the funny part. But we created the Smart Citizen Project. Basically with the assumption that if we will have smart cities, we cannot have stupid citizens in those, in those cities, right? The smart cities should be produced, should be made by smart citizens. Otherwise, let's not make it. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense, right? So as I told you, you all, all of you, you are a source of data, an individual data. But we take into this in the level of the city. And when we look about the city, we were trying to approach, maybe not in the so individual uh, level, but maybe thinking about you know, houses and apartments and how each house in the city could be a source of data of the street that is in front of it. It's not even the, the environmental data of your house. It's the data that is uh, that of the street or the square or the park that is in front of your house, right? So imagine the amount of money that one city council or company would need to put a sensor in every, every street of the city. First of all, they will buy super expensive sensors, environmental sensors. They will spend the same amount of money installing those sensors. And they will spend the same amount of money every year maintaining those sensors. And they will charge you, right? And then they will charge you for something that you don't understand. What's, what is a sensor, anyways? Why do I need it, right? So for us, it's interesting that to start to create platforms that allows us to create that data in a conscious way, with our own permission, with the will of creating this data for the good of the city, and start to create a community, what we call the smart citizen. So we needed money, and we couldn't find it, and only in Spain. So we did a crowdfunding campaign in Kickstarter. We managed to get 507 people around the world that say, I want one of those things. I want to participate in this community. I want to make meaning of the data that I produce. And that's why we created. We basically, what happens with, with Kickstarter is that you can just make a cool video and you should show it yourself. I'm sorry, I'm double now. But the thing is that we wanted to raise funds to develop an electronic board that could be accessible for people to buy, that could be easy for people to learn, to learn how to use, that should be easy for people to install in their houses, and it should be easy for people to understand and share the data that that thing, that that little board was producing. So you are basically having the tools to produce your own data, to share it as you want it and to contribute in the production of information about your city. So we are based on the assumption that every balcony of the city should have a sensor to produce very high resolution data of what's happening in front of my city. The big challenge is not only the CO2 emissions, but also the noise, the temperature, the humidity in a resolution that the weather stations that we have now are not given to us. Weather stations are 30 meters uh, uh, um, high from where you walk, or sometimes it's, it's just in a mountain. So when you have like the CO2 levels of a, of a city, it's basically maybe 50 meters tall, and you are walking with your kid, or you are biking somewhere, and that's, that's not the data that you are receiving. 
So that's what the Smart Citizen Kit captures. It's basically, I have one of those here in my pocket. It's just this size, a sensor kit. So it's compatible with Arduino. If some of you don't know, don't know Arduino, Arduino is an open source electronic board that is part of a big community of people in the world that you can use it to play with electronics, to learn how to program. And that's pretty amazing. With Arduino, you can make almost any electronic pro uh, program with a um, project without being necessarily an electronic engineer or a programmer, which is very nice. So we we'll capture temperature, humidity, the amount of light in the city, the noise, very important in Barcelona. Um, the CO and NO2, which are related with the fossil fuels emissions or combustion, right? So basically, what we do with the data is that we created some kind of an online platform. It's like a, you know, like a social network of sensors that is basically mixing Google Maps with some kind of Facebook of devices, you know, in which people can connect. They can just get their own data, share it with, your with their neighborhoods, and try to understand it. The idea is to humanize the data and also to socialize it, which is the most important part of the project. But you can also carry it. We did an experiment in the Internet of Things World Forum organized by Cisco. By the way, we didn't sell the, we didn't sell the company to Cisco. But we just did an experiment for them. People were carrying the sensors and they were creating dynamic data. So you can make, you can just, when you go biking or, or running, you can just carry the sensor and, and you know, the, select the best tracks that you want to choose when you're going out or maybe when you're taking your kids to school. And you can do that through a mobile application that is right now in the, in the App Store. It's not yet ready for Android, but I guess that half of you has, have an iPhone. And you can just download it if you, if you search it as a smart citizen. And you can connect your kid with your mobile phone and then just go biking and make dynamic maps on your tracks relate, and relate that, those tracks with the data that you are producing. But you can do other things like, you know, Insta weather. It's like you take pictures and you put on, on top of the pictures the <laughs> and you put on top of the pictures the, the weather that is, happen, that, are in the is, that is in the city right now. As I told you, you can take a picture of a street and you get Insta weather and it will give you the data of a station that is maybe three kilometers away from you. What we're doing with the kit is that you can take a picture and you can take the closest sensors data and then put it on top of that. So you can use it basically maybe to denounce something or, you know, or to make, create more awareness of what is happening in a very high resolution. So the important part of a project for us is not creating a piece of technology. It's actually developing the tools for a community, a community to grow. We have in total around 700 backers in all the world because we did two crowdfunding campaigns which are now being part of this network. There are cities like Amsterdam that are launching the Smart Citizen program in Amsterdam this next December and they are starti starting with 100 participants. They want to make sense about what is happening in their cities. So I like very much this quote from Cedric Price in the 60s. Technology is the answer, but what is the question? We are giving you a little answer. That is, this may be a piece of hardware connected with software and a mobile application, but the question will be yours will belong to any of you and not to us. We are not going to answer you what you have to do. So we invite you to use technology to connect to your community, to create community out of it, to learn new technologies, to encourage you to learn more than what you, what you learned so far. We invite you to know your environment in a higher resolution, in a higher level. We want you to have the capabilities to build your own applications from that data to own your data and make whatever you want with it. We want you to be part of a data revolution. Thank you very much.